I'm a road warrior, a net ninja, a life luchador. I need my gear to be ready for whatever opportunities may come my way. I'm writing, researching, recreating, social posting, and occasionally I get in some casual gaming. So I took Samsung's latest tablet offering, the Galaxy Tab S7 Fan Edition for a ride to see if it can make a fan out of me. But I also wanted to test out the Z Fold 3 as a tablet and compare and contrast the two. With both devices and the requisite accessories, I'd need to get the most out of them in tow. I began my work week, stepping into Monday like... Now, normally you'd get the spec dump here, but specs on paper don't always translate well to experience, so I'm going to weave that information into sharing my experience with you. I'm reviewing the Mystic Black 5G version, which comes with four gigabytes of memory and 64 gigabytes of storage. I'm gonna stop right there. I'm looking at this as a laptop alternative, not a replacement. Nonetheless, a device that can actually get solid work done. And this ain't it, Chief. <laughs> Switching between DeX and the Android interface, I was getting memory warnings regularly. Now, you may be saying, it's just DeX. Well, let me paint this picture. Pharaoh Monch and MF Doom are to hip hop what DeX is to computing experiences, highly underrated. And just like Pharaoh Monch, DeX is actually quite exceptional, noteworthy even. You just won't be able to experience that on this model sporting just four gigabytes of memory. Now, to be fair, I never had any memory issues running the standard interface, Android 11 and One UI 3.1. Everything I did there flowed like water. If DeX use is important to you, and it should be, in my opinion, if you're looking at this as a serious laptop alternative, then go with the 128 gigabyte or 256 gigabyte models with six and eight gigabytes of memory respectively. But all was not lost. Running the standard mode, I actually utilized a feature which gets little attention from me on my trusty Note 20 Ultra, pop-up view. I'm often researching and writing and consuming content at the same time, so the ability to have pop-up view and have my writing window open and some text-based research open and maybe a video three windows at once is my happy place. And there were no slowdowns, despite the four gigabytes of RAM. Being in the browser full screen with multiple tabs, some web pages optimized for a smaller mobile screen rendered as they were designed. But like I said, laptop alternative. So I generally want to look at those pages in desktop view, which I found works great on Android and Chrome. Please Google, give us the option to force desktop mode globally, not on demand, one tab at a time. It's, it, let's do this. It's, it's time. And, and while doing this researching and browsing, if I don't want to be interrupted by switching devices to answer important calls or texts, I was connected to a Galaxy Z Fold 3 5G and a Galaxy Watch 4 Classic. I could just use the call and text on other devices feature. Well, if I wasn't using this device on AT&T. Verizon has the same issue though, and that is that feature isn't supported on their networks. But what was supported was a delightfully fast 5G experience, which aided me in getting things done. Full disclosure, AT&T provided me with both devices for the purpose of this review, but did not ask for a network review in return. And letting me keep the devices, which they don't, these will be sent back. It isn't enough to compromise my integrity, but I will add this anecdote though. I'm a T-Mobile subscriber, and ever since some developer put up a behemoth of a building next to my day job, I get little to no LTE or 5G signal on my personal devices. On this Tab S7 FE and Z Fold 3, the data transmission experience has been top-notch, despite the newly erected development. 
you know what else is well developed? This display. Despite being an LCD, it does a decent job of handling blacks, as you can see here in the dark areas of this scene in The Witcher, season one, episode four. And back in the banquet hall, the white wolf's contacts pop with yellow vibrancy. Our planet, Coastal Seas, looks beautiful and vibrant, and these are non-HDR videos. It doesn't support HDR. Looking at the Disney Plus app, Thor Ragnarok looks and sounds pretty good. These Dolby Atmos supporting AKG tuned speakers provide just a small amount of stereo image layering when Surtur drags his giant sword behind him as he approaches Thor. And at 74 decibels, they definitely get loud enough. Musically, Esperanza Spaulding's Black Gold Anthem as a title master track is a delight through these speakers. Though they could be a touch warmer, in their reproduction. For best effect, back up about two feet to get the full effect of the stereo image instead of sitting right up on the tablet. Rounding out the multimedia experience, being a casual gamer, I have to say that Call of Duty and Xbox Game Pass load times were pretty fast. And when I played Streets of Rage 4, there was no lag or latency gaming on 5G or over Wi-Fi. You'll game over dual band Wi-Fi 5, aka 802.11c, not Wi-Fi 6. The tablet only heated up several degrees after an hour of heavy gaming, never feeling anywhere near uncomfortably hot when I touched it, though I did use a stand and an Xbox controller via Bluetooth. But I'm a casual gamer. Y'all who use words like GG and yell toxic at the top of your lungs, your mileage may vary. Side note, I used a thermo gun to log temperatures. Under the hood, you're going to get some serious battery life out of the 10,090 milliamp hour, 45 watt fast charging behemoth of a battery. You just won't get the full power to fast charge it to its full potential in the box. You'll need to spring for a new charging brick for that. You get a 15 watt in the box. That said, I get multi-day usage with around four hours screen on time a day. And in my benchmarking, the battery went seven hours with six hours screen on time and still had 18% charge left, which the FE predicted was enough for nine more hours of use. You do get cameras with night mode and eight megapixel rear and five megapixel front phaser. And as you can see here, I always test with really harsh colors and harsh flowers because that really tests a sensor's capabilities. The Tab S7 FE, it muddles the details in the flowers and these bright red flowers, but these red signs look really great. They're sharp. This sign here actually looks quite sharp, as does the barbed wire and the uh, phone number on this sign. All those images are sharp. So in ideal conditions, uh, the tablet is gonna take solid photos. In addition to those cameras, you're also going to get those pogo pin magnetic accessory connectors along the aluminum body of the tablet. The SE definitely feels solid in hand. It does have an affection for fingerprints just a little on the back where you'll find a magnetic pad and another on the top to place your included passive S pin. Say what? Yep, passive-ish. You will see it communicating with the tablet when you hover and the latency when writing is very, very low. And that handwriting to text functionality is top notch. But when you hit the menu and turn on the function to connect an S pin, it will tell you that there's no pin found. So to get air gestures and full pin functionality, you're going to need to pick up an S Pen Pro, you know, has Bluetooth connectivity to the, the, the tablet. But I'd also ask you a serious question. How many times have you actually used your S Pen? For many users, the one that comes with the FE may be more than enough. Overall, I think this is actually a great tablet. You know, if you know what you need prior to purchase and get the model, which meets those needs. A great tablet in a vacuum. But since we don't live in one of those outside of our favorite social echo chamber, there's the Z Fold 3 to consider, as well as pricing on the Tab S7. 
With regard to the Z Fold 3 and it being a tablet replacement with its unfurled massive wingspan, no, it isn't. What the Z Fold 3 represents is the evolution of the phablet. In my time with it, I loved using it, though it suffered from the same window scaling issues that the S7FE does, inconsistency. YouTube comments don't show up in landscape mode on the FE. Forget about that nine by 16 aspect ratio being right in your Facebook and Instagram stories on both devices. And on the Z Fold 3, you can't even use DeX on device. You have to cast it to another display. Though I took out my tablet less with the ability to just do quick multimedia viewing and, and light copywriting for longer multi-hour work, it was still the S7 FE over the Z Fold 3 all the way. But let's also talk briefly about pricing. If you want the 5G enabled version, you're going to pay $670 full price and you only have the 64 gigabyte option available. If you want DeX to be usable, you'll need the 128 gigabyte Wi-Fi version with the six gigabytes of memory, which is only $600, but for $50 more, you can get a similar offering in the Tab S7, which has a better refresh rate on the display, better Wi-Fi with Wi-Fi 6, AKA 802.11ax support, and a faster, more current processor, although you'll get less battery life. In its efforts to make sure everyone who wants a device can obtain one at a price point that fits the budget, this is a tough one. I thoroughly enjoyed my time with the tablet and the 5G experience, though your mileage may vary. And if you are in and want to stay in Samsung's ecosystem, this is a great device. Outside the US though, it has some stiff competition. I'd argue that DeX is well worth the price of admission over some of that competition, but if you're really looking for a casual consumption and not a workhorse, that point is moot for you. So what do you think? Would this appear to work for your needs? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, if this video has helped you, please consider hitting us with that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and the bell so you'll be notified when we upload the latest news, reviews, and Android coverage. I'm Tashaka Armstrong. I don't take it lightly that you spent your time with us today. I'll catch you on the next video.